Hello, beautiful souls. My name is Jessie, and welcome to my Tiny Talks podcast, the show where we'll dive into self love, inner child healing, and discovering your soul's purpose. I look forward to chatting with you every single Tuesday and Thursday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's Tiny Talk. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to my Tiny Talks podcast. I am your host, Jesse Brown, and I am, as always, thrilled to be here with you guys, and we are going to be diving into episode 47 of Tiny Talks. And if you know me well, you know that 47 is one of my absolute favorite numbers, so I just already know going into this episode, this is going to be a good one. I got good energy flowing. I'm excited to pump that into today's content to deliver that to you guys. So if you're listening, I truly hope some of my energy just radiates onto you and that this maybe just lifts up your mood and inspires you and just elevates your vibe. And I think that that really ties in well to what we're chatting about today. And today's subject is one that I think is going to be something we can all benefit from. And basically it prefaces around four habits and four things that we can do to become happier human beings. And when I was thinking about this episode, you know, I just kept realizing what is it that we all want? What is it we all strive for? We all want to be accepted and seen and validated and happy and appreciated. But whenever we're living in that happy mindset and just enjoy and flow and fulfillment, we really are living our life to the most of its capability and potential. And who doesn't want to find ways to improve their life and to be happier? And so I am so excited to dive into today's episode with you all. So without further ado, let's dive into four habits to be happier in your life. So I all I want you guys to all just think of a time in your life that you're consciously aware that maybe you're not happy and you just try to almost force yourself to be happy, right? We like to mimic our emotions specifically when we're around other people. And I know that this is something that I'm guilty of and that I'll suppress anything that I'm feeling because I don't want to push that onto anybody else. And so we get really good at masking our emotions and then we have really high highs and really low lows. And it's often in those times that we have those really low lows, specifically when we're at home and we don't have distractions and we're just left with our thoughts that we're feeling unhappy that we like to bring in those quick fixes. And I just want to preface by saying that anytime that we try to make ourselves immediately happy and we try to just cover that up and suppress it and fake it, it often backfires. And it backfires on us because we try to, again, do those quick fixes. So by buying stuff and having those impulse buys, that gives us that sense of high of just feeling good, or we eat bad foods like greasy foods or junk food because that momentarily makes us feel good, or we watch movies all day, or we end up partying or using substances or distractions or whatever it is. So basically, we try to distract ourselves and veer ourselves to have that short-term happiness and fulfillment. But the thing is, is when we do that, we're basically just slapping a Band-Aid on our emotions. We're just quickly covering them up momentarily, But all those reasons of why you weren't happy prior to going into that are going to be there again when those activities are done. And oftentimes they're there more intensely, right? And that can really lead us down a loophole. And I truly think that during the pandemic, this really hit a lot of people close to home, especially me, like everybody across the board. But this is something I can definitely speak from from my heart because I just felt like There was so little things to do. And at the time I was living in Northern Alberta and there really was just not much to do. And so I found myself being very numb a lot, dissociating a lot, almost like my emotions were just like suppressed and squished. And I feel like we all kind of experienced that systemically because we all were in some way, shape or form going through all the same things together. Because what that time took away was our sense of connection and connecting to others and going out and doing those things. And so I think that the pandemic and the and the long-term effects of that, we really are already seeing some of the impacts of that, right? Folks that had anxiety before, it's increasingly worse, or folks who have never really experienced anxiety before are now having these feelings that they don't really recognize or really know where they're coming from. And so I just want to always highlight that it's okay and it's normal to have low days, to have numb out days, to have days that we feel low and we do just need to chill out and watch some TV. 
But this episode is really about living our life optimally and living our life just happier and raising our vibration because imagine our life just living three quarters of the time in a happy headspace, right? A positive outlook on the future, excited about the future instead of daunting about the past and being stuck and held back in the past, which is exactly what trauma and depression and anxiety and mental health does. It really just keep keeps us stagnant and keeps us in place. And so my goal for today's episode is to give you tools to not just give you a quick fix, but instead to rewire the brain. And I'm really consciously aware of how much my podcast surrounds about that, right? It's rewiring the brain because, again, I say this often, but I think we think that our mindset is stuck and stagnant. And when we get to a certain place that that's it. But I just want you to even ask yourself, has your mindset been the same your whole life? And the answer is no, of course not. It ebbs and flows depending on life circumstances. But that just goes to show that depending on what we do, what we think, what we believed, who we surround ourselves with, the the actions that we do, it really does shape our brain and shape our thoughts. And so this episode is about getting to the deeper core of it, to the deeper core of our mind, to rewire those negative thoughts that we have about life, the outlook, our anxiety, depression, all those things. And again, knowing that we do have to have that ebb and flow. We do have to have that teeter-totter balance. But this is really about getting to that deeper rooted core of changing our outlook on life to be happier in life. And so my first habit or action to do to become happier in life is to begin to look for the good. And so I think we often hear, you know, say these affirmations and do those things and whatever, but... It really is true in that we te- what we tell our mind, our mind begins to believe. And so beginning to look for the good because what we focus on, we will get more of that. Our brain will show us more of that in return. I even realized this recently where I'm looking at new vehicles, looking to trade in my vehicle and the ones that I'm looking at, I'm starting to see everywhere. And you think that, you think that all of a sudden there's all these new vehicles or all these new things, but the thing is, is that your mind is now just beginning to hyper look for it. And so it's the exact same thing with our thoughts. What we begin to focus on, we get more of. And I remember I seen this a lot with my clients when I worked in the trauma recovery field is that it was almost just like a rinsing, rinsing and repeat with their thoughts, right? How's your day? My day's been crappy. Next day, how's your day? My day's been crappy, right? Negative outlook, negative outlook. And of course, there's deeper rooted trauma there and things going on. And I don't want to disempower those folks who are feeling that way. And if that's you, know that that's okay and you're so worthy to go get help. But when we just keep holding on to the same things, they will begin to just expand and expand and get increasingly worse because when we tell ourselves those things we begin to have that outlook on life and so we're getting that in return and so again it's almost like we're proving to ourselves that our thoughts are accurate but when we're able to look for the good and to focus on that and get more of that and you begin to pay attention your mind will begin to emphasize it and give you more of that right because our mind wires And it wants to wire more happiness. And when you pay attention to happiness, meaning that you can actively train your brain to find happiness, and when you pay attention to the good things in your life, your mind will begin to find more happiness. And so this isn't about trying to force ourselves and to force ourselves to be happy, but instead to water those seeds of happiness that are already in our mind because they already exist right? We already have those parts of us that just want to be happy and want to thrive and want to evolve. And that is why simply when we smile, it releases our muscles and sends messages to our brains of certain emotions, right? Our brain knows exactly what happiness is. And so when we're able to find that and to just tend to those seeds of our brain, for lack of better phrasing, our brain will begin to give us that in return and to help those seeds grow. And so there's really two ways that we can begin to look for the good. And the first one is a gratitude practice. And so I encourage you every single day at the same time. And that is one of the best things we can do for our habits, which I did express in an episode a couple days ago about our habits, is that if we pick the same time of day to do the same action, our brain will begin to just do it subconsciously. And so let's say every single morning or every night, whatever time fits best for you, find a time to do gratitude practice. What are the things that you're grateful for? And for this one, I definitely encourage you to focus on things externally, 
Focus on things that are outside of you because it can be easier to find gratitude for things outside of ourselves, specifically in the beginning. And so that could be, wow, my morning coffee was so good this morning. I'm so thankful for coffee. Or wow, the sunrise was beautiful this morning. Wow, I love the trees that are outside of my house, right? I'm so thankful to have hot running water, right? Finding those little things to be grateful for that oftentimes we begin to take for granted and that we forget about. But when our mind is able to just find more gratitude, we're also alleviating that part of ourselves that feels the gap of not having enough. Because if we're able to focus on all the things that we do have, we're less likely to focus on all those gaps of things that we don't have, which often lead us to going down that spiral of feeling sad or less than or without. And so beginning a gratitude practice is huge. And the second way to begin to look for the good is to write down three things that you specifically are doing. Writing down three things that you're really good at. And there was a study done and it basically expressed that people who did this for 14 days, so two weeks consecutively, had less burnout, had less less depression, had less conflict at home, less conflict at work, had a happier family balance between work and home life. Just by taking the time to write down three good things that you're doing. And furthermore on the study, it came out by saying that the two week period that they did that consistently led to having positive outlooks for more than six months. So basically after two weeks of consciously doing that consistently, the mind was able to rewire and see benefits for up to six months. So that is just proof to show that it is so possible. And anybody who wants to challenge that, that's a beautiful thing. Try it for yourself and notice how you feel. Writing down three things that you're doing well. So maybe that's every single morning when I wake up, I have a great routine. Or maybe you're really good at taking time for reading. Or maybe you're really good at cooking. Or whatever it is, highlighting three things that you're good at doing or that you're good at or that you're just proud of. By showing your brain what you want to see, your brain will begin to reward you by showing you more of it. And there's this quote that I found that I really like and I'm definitely going to butcher the guy's name that said the quote, but I'm going to try my best. So his name is Jose Ortego y Gasset. I definitely said that wrong, but regardless, his quote goes as follows. What you think about, you bring about. What you feed will grow. Tell me what you pay attention to and I will tell you who you are. And I just think that that quote is so beautiful, but also just so accurate because what you pay attention to really does become your identity. It becomes the parts of your life that you hold on to and that you thrive to because if you have the mentality that I am a depressed person, you are going to walk around doing the actions of someone who is depressed. If you tell yourself, I am athletic, you are going to be conscious of what you eat, the water you intake, the time that you spend doing physical activity, right? Your cleanliness, your just all those things, right? When we have an identity shaped around things and we hold on to that, that's where our mindset starts to fixate and get stuck in. And so that's what really this is about is because I do think again that the pandemic almost, it shifted a lot of us and it gave us a lot of momentum to re- reboot our life and rechange it and pivot our life. But I do think that it did cause a lot of us to become stuck in certain ways, certain habits, right? Coming home and just watching TV because there's nothing else to do. Feeling that sense of fear of the world, fear of other people. And so it's about rewiring those thoughts that we had that were ingrained in us for two years, And that can be anything that resonates with you. Maybe it's not the pandemic. Maybe it's something from your college life or high school that has just stuck with you. So it's about bringing awareness to that and beginning to look for the good. My second point or habit on ways to become happier is one that I absolutely love. And I think that we all just need to take a moment to reflect on how often you're doing this because it's something that just makes my heart so happy. And that's to serve and connect with other people. And so doing things for others almost always psychologically makes us feel better, right? There's never really a time that we do something for somebody else out of the kindness of our heart and we regret doing it, especially if we can see a smile on someone's face or can see the gratitude or that we lifted some weight off people's shoulders or we're just able to help out right? We are human beings and we are wired to be a community. 
We are not meant to just be alone and be isolated. And again, I think the pandemic really did force us to be isolated. And so of course, this part of us really was depleted. And we as humans need that social connection. We need to connect with other human beings. And so if we're able to allow ourselves to look for ways that we can help other people, look for ways that we can serve our community and those we love and just elevate ourselves as a collective, it really does psychologically make us feel better. And so I encourage you to look for chances to serve other folks, starting your day with the intention to find someone to do good to, and I promise you that you'll find it. And it can even just be little things, like if you see a cart at the grocery store is in the way, take the initiative to take it and put it away, right? You don't always have to have a reward or validation for things that you're doing. Because I do think that it is those things that we do that we don't get validation for and we just do out of the goodness of our heart that really does come back to us in the flow of karma, right? There is negative karma and there is positive karma. And what we put out and what energy we put out without expecting anything in return really is one of the most beautiful mindsets that we can be in. Not feeling like anybody owes us anything or taking tallies on things because we feel like we deserve it. But how can we instead be of service to other people? And that could even just be to our universe. How can we be of service to our land? Cleaning it up, making it look pretty, tending to it, whatever that is. And so even just connecting with others is a really, is really, really good for our nervous system, right? It regulates us. And we're, again, creatures of habit and connection. And our goal of connecting with others and serving with others is to increase our joy, increase our joy in life. Joy is one of the highest levels of vibration that we can have as human beings. And so I encourage you to find ways to be intentional about serving others, helping others. Again, I feel like I'm thinking of the grocery store a lot in this instance, but helping someone carry their groceries to their car or helping if you see something on the floor at a clothing store, picking it up and hanging it back up. Whatever it is, finding little ways that you can just be of service to help other people. Because think of those times that someone does something for you just as a random act of kindness. Think of how good that makes you feel. You feel seen and appreciated and like there is goodness out there because I think oftentimes we think other people are malicious and strangers are just out to get us and whatever, but think of most people in your life that aren't family. At one point in time, they were a stranger. We were all strangers to each other at one point, but we are all one big universe. And so how can we begin to work together and serve each other that also benefits us? And so that is my second point for you all to be happier is to begin to look for ways to serve and connect with other folks. My third point for you guys is one that I am consciously every day trying to work on and improve in my life because this is definitely one that I struggle with big time. And and I think that we are all guilty of this across the board. I think that I see this a lot with women and with moms specifically. However, this is definitely something that we are all as human beings guilty of. And that's finding time to slow down and to savor moments. We live in such a fast paced, go, go, go society to the point that we can pretty much get anything done with the flick of our wrist on our phone. We can pick out our groceries and have the ability to pick them up or get them delivered. We can order anything at the snap of our fingers on Amazon and have it showing up at our doorstep. We just have things done so easy for us nowadays that we forget to be present and to slow down. And beyond that, it's so easy to get caught up doing just random little things like the laundry and cooking and cleaning and working and doing everything. And when we do all that and we're just in that go, 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 go mentality, we forget to slow down and enjoy the beautiful moments. And it's oftentimes when we're on vacation that we're like, ah, we can just turn our brain off and enjoy it. And this is so nice. And then we get a dread going back to work. But why aren't we finding time to do those things every day before we get to that point of burnout? Why is it that we're not taking time to find the beauty within the things that we're doing? And this is something again that I know that I'm so guilty of because I'm just so focused on growing and evolving and just striving for the next thing. But in doing that, life is passing by and life is passing by quicker than we realize. And it's often when we look back that we wish we would have slowed down and appreciated the good small moments in life. And life is going to just keep going on. Time is going to keep going. 
And so it's up to us to find the time to be conscious and be aware of that because time slips away from us very, very easily. And I see this a lot with my nephew and he really reminds me to slow down because when I see him, even though I see him almost every day, he just gets so much bigger and grows so much so fast. And it's just amazes me how much we can miss all those little moments just being caught up in everything. And so if we're able to intentionally slow down and allow joyful moments to actually sink in, we actually get to enjoy them. And so scheduling time to slow down and notice when you're spiraling, making a commitment to yourself to be more present and grounded. And I did come up with a couple different ways that I'm going to be implementing into my life because again, this is something that I struggle with. And I often end up being resentful and grouchy and cranky and tired and burnt out because I'm not taking the time to slow down and to find joy. And when we do that, we're really missing out on the important things in life. Yes, work is important. Yes, all those things are important. But so is your mental well-being and remembering why we're here in the first place. We're not just here to go to school, to go to university, to get a job, to pay off debt, to get a house, to have a family. We don't have to be on a time schedule all the time. And I think that society has kind of shaped us into that, right? We all know what a nine to five means. Why do we all know what that means? Because it's been structurally ingrained in us. It hasn't been structurally ingrained in us to take time for ourselves. Never in school were we taught to take time to tend to ourselves, right? And so we have to remember to consciously do that. And I think that that is one of the biggest reasons why we are so burnt out and we are so dissociated and we are so just frustrated and overwhelmed and aren't taking time to just appreciate life. And that's because we're not taking time to slow down and enjoy it. And so three ways that might be helpful for you to do this is the first one is to take a picture of something beautiful daily. And so we're on our phones pretty much every single day. If you're not, I definitely envy you. But finding a way to take a picture of something you appreciate every single day and maybe creating an album on your phone so that you can look at it and just appreciate all those small small moments in your life. And for me, I like to write in my notes and write pictures with it of like basically a little diary throughout my day of this went really good and this is what I seen today and this was a beautiful sunset and I really appreciated the way that the light hit the building in this way or that you know, the way that that person painted their door a super cool color or whatever it is, it doesn't have to be big things for our mind to begin to see beauty. And I think that when we think of mental health and rewiring the brain and all these things, we think it's so complicated and overwhelming and that we have to have money, we have to have time and we have to have all these things. But finding the things that you just appreciate, what do you look at and think, oh, that's cool, but actually taking a moment and enjoying it instead of just brushing it off and moving on to the next thought absorbing it for a second, sitting with it for a second. If it sparks something in you, you have 20, 30, 40 seconds in your day to take the time to just appreciate it. What do you appreciate about it? If it's the door on the house, for example, maybe that person's outside gardening and you can take the time to say, hey, how's it going? I really, really enjoy your door there. It's really beautiful, right? And that's just a silly example, but it just shows that it doesn't take much. And in doing that, you're connecting with others and serving others as well as taking time to slow down. My second kind of way to slow down and savor every moment is to write down a good memory on a piece of paper and put it in a jar. So at the end of the day, write down something good that happened. There is always good in every single day. As much as we can have crummy days and days that we just feel like giving up and that, you know, we're just done and we want to throw in the towel, there's always something good that we can find. And so this is an activity that I want to start doing or I am going to start doing. Not I'm going to, I am. That's a different mindset. Talk for a different day. But getting a jar and writing down all the good moments. And maybe on one of those days that you're feeling a little less than, you can go back through and shuffle and see all the good memories that you've had. I think that that's just such a beautiful practice of something that you can tangibly have and look at and physically get it out of your body by writing it down but then also having something concrete that you can come back to and look at and appreciate. And then the third one is just a happy journal, right? Writing down all the things that make you happy in the run of a day. And I like to have like journals that I literally stick things in. So if it's like a candy wrapper and I'm like, yep, this candy was really good or a receipt from a certain place or a Polaroid picture from a place that I went and visited that was really beautiful or just a sentence someone said to me that really lifted my spirits or 
whatever it is, just a journal that you just lump sum everything in of everything that makes you happy. And so that is my third point for you guys of becoming happier is just to slow down and to savor more moments. And again, this is about finding ways to make this consistent throughout your life. This isn't just something that I want you guys to practice for a day or two or a week or two weeks, but instead a new way of living and a new lifestyle aspect. Because if we can all remind ourselves and rewire our brain to do these things, we really are setting us ourselves up to live the most optimal life and the happiest life possible. Number four, laughter. Laughter is one of the best things that we can do for ourselves. It is one of the best ways that we can convert quote unquote bad to good. Think of a time when someone was talking about something horrific or something challenging that they went through, but they kind of laugh it off. It's actually our instinct in certain situations when we're overwhelmed to laugh. And that's because laughter releases happy hormones. It calms our nervous system down, right? It shifts us into that state of just rest and digest, right? It allows our sympathetic nervous system to, to kick back on, right? And so laughter, think of what that physically does to us, right? Like our heart goes faster, like we're smiling, our brain is releasing hormones. Oftentimes when we laugh, we're connecting with other people, right? So finding ways to make yourself laugh. And so maybe that's watching funny videos. Maybe that's being around people that do make you laugh. Maybe it's thinking about a funny memory. And one thing that sometimes helps me is to literally fake laugh with someone until you actually start laughing. It's honestly one of the funniest things in the world when somebody starts to fake laugh. It's almost sarcastic, but then everyone just starts to laugh and laughter is so contagious. When have you ever heard people laughing? You're like, whoa, what's so funny, right? Because we want to be in on it. We want to know. We want to laugh too. Laughter is one of the best ways to raise our vibe and to raise our vibration. I often think back at days at work at my last job before the pandemic when I was with all my coworkers and the days that were harder and that I had challenging sessions with clients or were just harder days, but I had my coworkers to laugh it off with or to just find laughter and joy with. I remember those days just going home feeling so much more relaxed and at peace. And so that is my fourth point on becoming happier is to find ways to laugh. We need to laugh more. And again, not to continue to talk about the pandemic because I think we're all at a point that we just don't want to talk about it anymore. But I do think it is important to maybe reflect on how it has affected us because I think that collectively, if we can just acknowledge that together, we can rise together. But going back to that point of feeling numb, Oftentimes, laughter is a way to get out of that state of feeling numb, right? Because laughter is, again, operates very highly. Joy and laughter and fulfillment are very high on our frequency chart. And so finding ways that you can laugh. And again, like I mentioned earlier, smiling. Smiling and those muscles in your mouth. Sometimes forcing yourself to just smile. Look yourself in the mirror, smile. If you're in the shower, smile, right? You might think that it's silly, But it's psychologically proven that when we're able to just smile more and more and more, our brain begins to become happier. Even if you're angry, try to just smile and see how that feels. You almost can't help but just ask yourself, why am I so angry when you smile? Even though sometimes it doesn't just flick our mood around, but it really can help. And so to snapshot all of today's habits together and just bring this episode together for you guys in harmony is I want you guys to think of like an algorithm on social media. Think of like your Instagram algorithm. Things that you like, things that you look at, things that you search up, people you follow, etc. They begin to shape an algorithm. And so your feed will begin to show you that. And I want you to just recognize that your brain is no different. What you look at, what you search for, what you pay attention to, what you're aware of, that is going to show up more and more and more. And so becoming happier is about intentionally finding the good and making it a habit to find the good and to slow down. It's okay to have low days. It's okay to have days that we're just feeling a little crummy or we need to just be by ourselves or just be in a bad mood and just allow our emotions to flow through. But again, I'm talking collectively as our whole and as a lifestyle and as you are as a human being. I often hear people say like, your energy is just so great, like you're so happy and it's just blah, it's so refreshing. And it's like, we all have the capability to live like that. 
And it's such a more fulfilling, joyful, exciting life when you're living out of the state of being happier, right? It's okay, again, to feel those days, feel your emotions, but being a happy person is contagious because when you get around those people, you want to become those people. You want, you aspire to be that. One last thing before closing, I remember I was in my practicum in my second year of social work and I was at my practicum in a basement and one of the managers there had walked in. It was my first time meeting her and her energy when she walked in was just like so loving and caring and uplifting and positive and happy. And I was just like, wow, like you just turned my day around. And I remember leaving home that day. I was like, wow, or leaving work. I was like, I want people to feel like that when I walk in a room. I want people to feel like that when they're around me, to feel happy, to feel inspired. If they're having a bad day, know that they can talk to me about it, but that we can raise up together. And imagine if we all had that mindset of just wanting to collectively make the room brighter, make other people have a good day. And we have the ability to do that, but it starts from doing the work within. And so if we have deeper rooted things tending to that and noticing our thoughts as always and beginning to pivot and shift them. Thank you guys so, so much as always for tuning into episode, I keep saying week, we are doing two episodes a week now. So for episode 47 of Tiny Talks, I truly, truly hope that this just resonated and inspires you to become more aware of your mindset, become more aware of your outlook on life, Become more aware of the stories that you're telling yourself and your level of happiness and joy. I truly hope that this resonated. I hope that it made you smile. I hope that you're able to go find a way to make yourself laugh after this and to just raise your vibe and to serve others and connect with others. Thank you all so much as always. I look forward to chatting with you next week. Bye you guys. Thank you all so, so much for tuning into this week's episode of Tiny Talks. I absolutely love connecting with you all, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next week. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.